Welcome back to watching me slowly waste my life away. That's all this channel is essentially is the downward spiral of a man's life. Youth squandered, right here on video preserved for all eternity, and with a Pokemon theme no less. So here we get a, a big muscle guy. Uh, you would uh, you would really struggle to find someone in real life who looks like that and is also into Pokemon. Pokemon's just meant for skinny nerds and, and, and hyperactive Reddit people. Those are the only two uh, fan bases. Gosh, I sure do dunk on Reddit a lot. Probably because I spend so much gosh darn time on there. I don't even like it. Anyway, let's try to talk about Pokemon here. Pokemon! But where did that quote originate from? There's always that audio floating around on the internet with Bill Casby saying, Pokey and the man! Where did that come from? I, I know it was like a, a Simpsons bit, but I'm assuming the Simpsons dr drew from like a, a real life... <coughs> a real life quote of some kind. When he was the host of Kids Say the Darndest Things, and uh, I assume the Simpsons wouldn't just make that up for laughs. That they don't typically do weird non sequiturs like that, you know, like Family Guy does, like they do with the uh, with Rob Schneider and they go into Home Depot and you know the rest. Yeah, Family Guy does that kind of stuff all the time. But yeah, that surely there's actual. You know, that there's an actual clip somewhere where real-life Bill Casby said the words POKEMAN! Uh, let's go back and grab that item. I don't think we can get around the guy. Uh, let's put in some more uh, capable team members, maybe. You know, I think that's one of, maybe like the second of the... Well, let me back up. That, that fainted mischievous you saw is maybe like the second or third Pokemon on my team to to faint so far in in 12 episodes which really says a whole lot about the difficulties so the fact that I had to pause and rearrange my team just seems kind of unnecessary considering how one third of the the faints thus far were self-inflicted but nonetheless let's do something about this uh, level 33 Wingle and Whooper why do all these trainers only have two mines? It's just so gosh darn repetitive, you just one shot the two mines and then you you move on. Why doesn't anybody have a third one for for variety's sake? Look at me criticizing this uh, 18 year old game now. A, 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 a 17 year old game? I'm, I'm, I'm th getting the, the American release date and the J Japanese one mixed up. I do that often. Anywho, um, so I've been watching. Uh, I've been watching lots of Cyber Shell today, as I've been just blowing off work and watching YouTube videos. And old Cyber Shell's an interesting man. He he sure does love Sonic. I mean, uh, I'm a Sonic f a Sonic man myself, so I can understand that. But he's just so gosh darn knowledgeable about the subject. I thought I knew a whole lot about Sonic games. I, I thought I had played every single one except for the, the iPhone one, but turns out there are a bunch of uh, even more obscure ones buried within the the past that even I wasn't aware about, and Cybershell knew of them. And Look at me learning about new Sonic games still after all this time in 2021. Okay, let's head back to the helo medic Anyway, in some respects, Cybershell kind of represents the person I, I wish I could be. I wish I could be a, a Sonic expert, but then also have people who listen to me and respect my opinions. As opposed to, to right now, where I'm just a, a Sonic expert with six subscribers who, who are all just bots and can't actually, you know, absorb my, my lessons in any way. I'm the least listened to Sonic expert out there. I bet you, the viewer, don't even know what the first game to have Sonic in it was. You're probably thinking, well, Sonic, right? And you would be wrong. The first game to have Sonic the Hedgehog in it was Red Mobile in the arcades. 
It was a racing game where Sonic was like a, a little toy that hung off of the rearview mirror. That was before the original Sonic game had even come out. So yeah, there's some cool Sonic trivia for you. When you go into work tomorrow, well this is coming out on a Saturday, when you go into work on Monday, you can impress and amaze your co-workers with your newfound Sonic knowledge and those crusty 60-year-olds who sit in the cubicles to the, the left and the right of you, they'll be so enthralled and, wow, we had no idea that Sonic originated in an arcade game named Gale Racer. We respect you so much more. Yep, they will say those exact words. You know, other more famous Let's Plays have... Okay, here's somebody with three instead of two. I was just saying that earlier. Anyway, other Let's Plays have fan participation where they tell you to go do silly things on your own time. And he here's the first official a Mongoose One Billion a a fan participation request. A go, go in to work on Monday and find the oldest, crustiest employee you have there and, and, and tell them some Sonic trivia and see how they react. That'll be funny, and be sure to report back. It's probably going to be an extremely long time before anybody actually does that, considering I've been doing this for three years now, and I don't even have any real subs yet. But someday, somebody's going to come back to this video when they go through my backlog, and they're going to see this moment, and they're going to think, Wow, I gotta go try that. that that's my impression of you. Uh, lots of trainer battles in this episode, just one after another, and all with the same music. Oh, by the way, is there something wrong with like the the visual brightness of uh, of this capture? Because I saw a, a different a Pokemon Coliseum Let's Play recently. It was the the Pika Spray uh, Six Miracle Challenge, and anyway. He was playing on an emulator, and the, so the brightness levels were different, and there were additional details in the background that you could see, particularly in this stage, and you clearly cannot see them in this video. It's all just darkness back there, so I'm wondering what's clo wh wh which of the two is closer to how it's supposed to look. I mean, I would imagine mine's the closest visually, since this is being played on a Wii, that, that's original hardware, but... But I don't know, I guess it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things if the full background's visible and whether or not that's accurate to the game. Ooh, Aurasphere. That was actually kind of a, a mild attack in response for once. And don't get those too often. So, uh, yep, there's Sphiel. Um, so there was a, a Shadow Sphiel in Pokemon XD that was one of the the, the starters, essentially, aside from the actual starter, they had a series of very weak trainers, and they were all color-coded, so the, the blue one had the water-type Pokemon, and the, the trainer in the red outfit had the fire one, and so on and so forth. It was like a, a secondary set of starters you could choose from once you figured out the, the very simple pattern. Okay, so doing good, and just plowing right through all these trainers. <clears throat> We'll give SBO a break, and we'll give uh, we'll give it doesn't affect Mistrevious a break also. Gotta get a good rotation so everybody gets their EXP. And the new ones they don't uh, they've softened the game to the point where you don't have to worry about rotating your team out. Just one Pokemon has to win the match, and then your entire team gets EXP divided up six ways. Oh, new Pokemon games, you suck. So, anywho, uh, what else? I was talking about Cybershell still earlier, and uh, it was on some podcast a month or two ago that I found rather amusing, because I think it was... Th there were other famous YouTube people on the podcast as well. I think L.S. Mark was one of them, and L.S. Mark was complaining that he invited Butch Hartman to do an interview, and like Butch Hartman refused to do it, and he, he doesn't want to interact with L.S. Mark in any way ever again. He's just trying to avoid him. And so Cybershell suggested, well, uh, maybe I could try to set up an interview with Butch Hartman since he doesn't know who I am. And then once he gets into the building, it'll be like to catch a predator, and then you guys can jump out and surround him. And <laughs> Those guys are so gosh darn funny. Wish I could come up with humorous ideas like that. 
instead of just rambling like a crazy man. Oh, here we go. We got a new move. Confuse Ray. Um, yeah, we can probably get rid of Taunt. That's that's not a particularly, you know, useful move compared to Confuse Ray. I mean, Confuse Ray is more to the point. It actually does damage as opposed to a move that just makes the enemy repeat their same move over and over again. There's a very small number of situations where that would be useful. As that one character said in Despicable Me, Under what circumstances would we use this? And <laughs> that, that, that really wasn't the full quote, so that you're not going to know what I'm quoting there. That That's just going to sound like nonsense, but, but oh well... Okie doke, so did I write anything else down to talk about for today? Um, so, uh, remember Harambe? Uh, d um, no, don't say that. I was gonna say that famous Redditor quote that everybody was saying at the time, but that's stupid. Anyway, speaking of Harambe, I tried to make a Harambe joke on a Discord call once with like three people and none of them found it funny. For some reason, it, I, they, 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 they wanted me to explain why they had to shoot the gorilla, and I tried to frame it as if the, <coughs> the shooting was totally unnecessary, and they did it just because they're just a bunch of sadistic assholes over there at the Cincinnati Zoo, and nobody found that funny for whatever reason. It was quite sad. Someday I'll surround myself with fellow edgelords who will appreciate these, uh, these jokes. I do know one edgelord via streams, but I, I don't think that counts as like an actual friendship, the, the relationship between streamer and, and chat commenter. How can you build a lasting friendship when it's just messages typed in a chat box sent to a person over the internet when, when one person can speak fully with their mouth and the other cannot? That, that's, not, that's not a friendship, that, that, that is just superficial. Okay, uh, Yamaha's still got some... he's got plenty of health left, so let's give him some action. As Larry the Lobster says, I haven't seen any action all day. What episode was that from, anyway? Okay, yeah, it was the one where Spongebob wanted to be a lifeguard, but he just wanted to look cool. He didn't think he'd have to actually do any of the lifeguarding duties. And it was Patrick, of all people, that needed lifeguard assistance. And, uh... Yeah, he, he got the cramps and, and, and his butt twisted up into the, the, the little, uh, kind of like, kind of like those swirly, twisty ice cream cones, that, that kind of shape. You know what I'm talking about? Eh, yeah, probably not. Yeah, down goes Cacnea. I like Cacnea. He's got a, a cool design. I don't think any of the Pokemon past, like, a Gen 3 really have any decent designs. Nothing that's really visually appealing, you know? But maybe I'm just being a boomer when I say that. Everything was better in the past! So, I, I think this battle's been exclusively trainer- uh, fuck. I think this episode's been exclusively trainer battles thus far. I don't think we've had any plot progression in the past uh, uh, 13 minutes and 50 seconds. Just battles, battles, battles. How you liking these battles? That's just how Pokemon Coliseum goes. At least the ratio of battles to cutscenes isn't too bad, like uh, some games, like Dragon Quest XI, for example. It, it just didn't lend itself well to my format, because it's either 30 straight minutes of battles or 30 straight minutes of plot. You, you can't make a Let's Play out of this. I'm sure there's some some smug <clears throat> smug Japanese man listening to this, and he was a developer of Dragon Quest XI. And he he smugly sits there with his arms folded, and he's proud that the Let's Players aren't gonna shit all over his his game that he made. He deliberately made it obtuse for the Let's Players so that they wouldn't bother. Mission accomplished, uh, dra Japanese Dragon Quest XI developer. Mission accomplished. Gosh, this was the, the ramblingest episode we've had in quite some time.